Hey everyone, Max at 343 Labs here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a clip by Claire Lim, one of our instructors, where she talks about MPE and Ableton Push integration. MPE stands for MIDI Polyphonic Expression. Now this clip is taken from 343 TV, which airs several times per week, right here on our YouTube channel. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. If you've used Wavetable in Live 10, which is the, the, the version of Live where it came out, these three tabs were already there, Mod Sources, Matrix, and MIDI. Now we have a fourth tab, MPE, that lets us control specifically what is controlling different parameters inside Wavetable over here. So a really great way of thinking about this is what am I doing and then what is the effect that I want that to have? So cause and effect, right? In this case, I'm varying the pressure. So that is what I'm doing. What do I want it to affect? Um, in this case, I think it's already affecting the oscillator one warp. We can see that over here in live. And it's not doing it by a lot. It's only doing it by 10 um, degrees or 10 on a scale of, of 100, right? So if I brought this all the way up, to 100. Again, I'm just clicking on this box and dragging upwards. Now, the pressure variation is going to affect more of the warping of the wave. So, here we go. There we go. Nice. Right? So now, pressure is affecting that a little more. I actually liked it pretty subtle, so I'm going to leave that at um, about, uh, let's do like 20 some, 40 something, maybe? 50-ish? Uh, let's see. Um, that's good. But I do actually want pressure to start affecting my wavetable position. So I'm going to, again, think of cause and effect. My, my thing that I'm doing is varying the pressure. I want it to affect the oscillator one wavetable position. So I'll click and I'll drag upwards over here. And now as I scroll through and I apply more pressure, not scroll through, as I apply more pressure, I'm scrolling through the wavetable. So if I've got my minor seven chord, starting off very pure maybe, And then over time, as I apply more pressure, it's starting to get a little bit more intense as well. Uh, let's also just go ahead and bring down the frequency a little bit. So slightly lower cutoff, maybe a little bit of resonance around the 1K. Nice. Very cool. Um, a little bit more, maybe like three. Great. So that's like a very quick 101 thing on getting started with MPE. But here's the thing about the MPE stuff, which maybe you may or may not have heard from my demonstration of this. I'm able to independently change any of these values for whatever note I'm playing. So for example, if I've got, let's just start with a, let's start with a minor third. I've got these two notes. I've got this and I've got this. I can independently change their data depending on how much I'm pressing on each of them individually. And this applies for all of the notes, right? So let's see, let's bring back my minor seven. I can make them all change and evolve a little bit at different rates, which is very cool. Um, and ultimately, I'm not specifically looking for like a super big gesture at this start, at this stage. Um, but I do want a little bit of variation to make things a bit more interesting, right? Because it, it might be nice, you know, to have a little bit more, I don't know, crunchy things or little crispy variations going around with the wavetable stuff. So that's what I want to try doing. And I think I'd actually like to do a little bit of... Yeah, actually, let's, let's do that. Let's do a little bit of a um, loop. Cool. And now this time though, I want a fixed length thing for four bars because I want a four bar chord progression. So we change that, and whenever we're ready, we will go for it. Here we go. Good. Okay, let's take a pause because uh, I just did a bunch of things <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, what's Claire doing? Um, but yeah, so I've got my chords going now. I can hear the subtle changes in there. Let's go ahead and solo the chords and we'll play it back again. You can you hear that? All right. Very nice. 
and it's all kind of evolving at different rates. So it's 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 about these subtleties that I think are, make MP so powerful. To get lots of wonderful variation. Good. And if I go into clip view, I can also see the length of stuff as well. So that's always nice. Great. Uh, now the cool part about this is that we can edit the MPE data a little bit more if you want to you know, make a couple of things. And this is something that I do think is better done in live than from you know any an interface. If you want to do a little bit of finer editing to these uh, parameters, this is the uh, note or the sample tab. So if you're working with audio, this is where you would see that. And then you can click on the envelopes tab, which is the second part over here. So if you're doing, say, pitch bend stuff, you can go ahead and do that, do that over here. Um, or if you're doing automation for like track volume, specific things like that, you can also do that here. And then the third tab, ooh, yay, all the squigglies. Wow, yay. These are uh, all of the curves for our pressure data. Check this out over here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and close up slide first just so we can see pressure in a little bit more of an expanded way. Um, but similar to how a lot of editing works in live with, say, the velocity sliders in the lower section, and that's usually in the notes tab. You'll see the velocities pop up over here at the bottom. Um, if you're in the node expression tab, you can see each, each different kind of node expression information on its own individual lane. So that's kind of what we call the expression lanes. Uh, we've got pressure over here, which is cool. We can now see each of these. And if I want to fine tune things, I can click on any of these and I can draw them in, or I can also just click and, you know, drag some, some things over. I'm not sure if I, <laughs> I would want to do what I just did because that would be a little strange. Um, but you can make some finer adjustments to these things. You can also, of course, delete things if you don't want to hear them. Um, and if you have the editor popped up, which I will in a moment, you can even see it like on a per note basis. You can scroll into a specific note and even adjust maybe pitch bend data pertaining to this particular note. So let's try this out actually, maybe for this um, C that I have over here. I wanna do an individualized pitch bend all the way down to, um, <laughs> yeah, let's do like below um, with a, a, maybe like an octave below and then bending all the way up. And it will be so cool to see this. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hold down command so that snaps to the octave. Let's do that. Cool, and let's take a listen to <laughs> the, the wavetable at the moment. I actually don't know how this is gonna sound, but if we're lucky, we'll be able to hear something. So here we go. <laughs> nice, beautiful. We always want that, yes. Wonderful. And it's just for that note. Notice how all of the other notes are not bending. Um, so that's something that's very cool with, with MPE. I, I love doing that and, and creating interesting bends for different types of um, things, especially if I'm doing things related more to like the ambient music stuff that I do. This has been like incredibly wonderful to play around with. Um, so that's one thing that you can do with the editing stuff. I'm not going to actually do that. So I'm going to undo what I did. I'm not sure I want the pitch bends. So we'll leave that as it is, but I'm very thankful for the slide stuff because it's adding in some interesting variation. Good. So great. Let's keep that as it is. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'll head back over to the notes tab and let's close this back up too so that we can um, get, get a little bit more done. Let's unsolo that. And now for to add some additional things to this, I think I'd like to get started with a specifically MPE preset. So let's head over here to the sounds tab or the sounds category, excuse me, talking lots about tabs, <laughs> the sounds category inside live. And usually the way that the sounds category would work in previous iterations of live is that this would be organized for like types of sounds, right? So for example, everything that's a bass sound, regardless of the instrument, so regardless of whether it's analog, operator, wavetable, simpler, sampler, all of the other instruments, it would all show up in the bass category. Um, same thing for other sounds, so like guitar and plucked you get a lot of those as well. Maybe like tension, a little bit of maybe electric if you're getting a plucked type of sound. But now we have a new category that kind of bypasses all of these other groups of sounds and instead is just called MPE sounds. So if you click on this category um, and you open up the little disclosure triangle, if you click on the disclosure triangle and have it open up, 
it'll show you a bunch of custom sounds that have been already um, optimized, if you will, to be used with MPE data and like pressure stuff like that. Um, so let's go ahead and head over to one of these over here. Let's do um, Spieler. Oh, that one's a very fun one. It's kind of, it's kind of like a Berlin-y sort of thing. <laughs> very Berlin today for the, for the lovely folks at Ableton in honor of them for creating these things. Um, so let's go ahead and solo this over here and uh, we'll go ahead and play with one of these. Uh, before I actually do something specific of it, let's just demo it and let's see what happens if we use a little bit of ver pr pressure variation. So here we go, we got our, let's do a note. Nice. Cool. So my pressure is affecting how much of that stuttering that we're hearing, which is pretty cool. Um, and a really great part about using some of these MPE presets is that it's a really wonderful way of understanding a little bit of design philosophy for synths. For example, if I head over to this left-hand side over here, this is my MPE rack. We talked about instrument racks in a previous stream that I did, which was very fun. So thank you everyone who tuned into that. And if you have um, if you're curious about learning more about instruments racks, you can always rewatch the replays because we have them stored on um, YouTube over here on our channel. So please check that as well. And I also have a, a couple of things that I've done on my own YouTube channel too, which you can find under Daltrix. So you can find that as well. And that's in lowercase letters, D-O-L-L-T-R exclamation point, C-K. Um, but yeah, so in the meantime, we've got this over here. I got my rack. Let's open it up and let's get under the hood. So I'm going to click over here on this little icon that says show hide devices and I can open up this device. Ah, okay. This is really good. Uh, like I mentioned just now, I probably guessed that this device was Wavetable because we had uh, the, because we know that Wavetable is one of those MPE sensitive devices, right? But before Wavetable, I have something else that's called MPE control. This is a Max for Live device. Um, so you, I know that it's a Max for Live device because I can see the little plug out option over here, but it lets us fine tune a little bit more of the curves or the response to uh, pressure that's coming in. So for example, MPE control over here, I can see that I've got pressure as my selected control. I can also see that I've got a little bit of a press curve that is slightly different. So for example, if I'm holding down this note, I can see how my pressure is showing up as this little yellow slash orange dot. And if I press a chord and then change the pressure of each of the notes, each of them is going to pop up individually. So you can get some really cool stuff. And I can change the curve, right? I can always move it so I can make it happen in the other direction. Maybe I want a slightly more concave or, or convex type of thing, depending on what I want. So I preferred the other one just now, so I'm gonna stick with that. Um, but then I can also listen to how it's being how it's affecting my sound, and if I want to make additional changes too. The fun part about using a lot of these presets over here, and I'll just close up wave table for now, is that you again have the most the eight most important things showing up on on this particular preset, right? So what's happening in this case is the designers in live, the wonderful sound designers, have thought, hey, what will be the most useful things to be able to share um, or to be able to, to use in this case with the folks who are using this particular preset. One of them is MPE invert. And I love this control so much because it kind of changes the characteristic of the uh, preset that you're working with. And it takes the entire reaction of the MPE data and kind of flips it on its head. So remember how initially when we're starting off right now, the more pressure I press, the more pressure I, I give, the more of that stuttering we're getting. If I want that inverted, now I'm pressing very lightly and it's giving me the opposite of that. So this is a really cool way of being able to play with some of these devices off the bat. And then of course you have other parameters to like maybe filter cutoff. Got some oscillator shape stuff. Reverb. Which I can also change directly from push. So that's something else that I can, can do as well. Um, and, and figure out like, you know, what's a cool sound and a good way of manipulating these things. So actually, let's bring the filter cutoff back up. Maybe less of the reverb decay, more reverb amount. Uh, let's bring up the sub a little too. I think that'll be fun. Very nice. Cool. So maybe I want to add that like as a little bit of a stuttery type of thing. That could be interesting. 
Um, but yeah, so that's kind of an example of how to go under the hood for one of these devices. So I have my other two things going on. Let's go ahead and unsolo this. Um, and let's add on maybe a very subtle sort of layer. So here we go. Let's also send it to some uh, reverb and delay. So let's go ahead and do that. Same thing for wavetable also. We'll add a couple of reverb and delay up here. Great. Okay. Sweet! So now we've got a couple of things going on. Um, I want to also add in some kind of bass, and I think we can use another MPE sound for this. So let's take a listen to a couple of these things going on. We've got airy pad and sub, which is actually a fifth, so I'm not sure if I want to use that. Um, but let's take a look at some other things. I think I was looking at... Um, that's pretty nice as well. So maybe we'll use that, or we could use... Ah, MPE source bass. Let's use this one instead. Um, great. Now, when I usually think about um, bass, I like thinking of them as like also a different shade of blue. So hopefully it shows up as blue. Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> great. <laughs> Convenient. Uh, let's make it a different blue, though. So let's make it that. Um, now I can start creating some additional stuff with it as well. But let's just keep things simple. I want to make um, some kind of bass line to go along with the chord progression that I had. So let's, let's do that. Um, here we go. Okay, here is the progression. Nice. And we can see the data also. Yeah! Cool! So starting to make things with MPE sounds. Very cool. And we'll take a pause right there. Uh, but yeah, that's a really quick way of getting started. And even for the bass itself, I didn't actually do a lot to the sound. All I did was pressure variation, but it was enough to create a little bit more interest. So I'm going to go ahead and just solo the bass as well. You can hear that happen a little. And then pulling back on the pressure. Pulling back on the pressure. Very cool. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, 343 TV goes live right here on our YouTube channel several times per week. And if you want to learn more about music production or just want to join our community, you can find more information at 343labs.com or 343labs.de for our German website. See you next time.